My name is Thomas Angelo, and I'm one of the counselors here at Cape and Mount Carmel. Welcome. Um, I wish we were doing this in person, and I'm really happy that uh, you guys are all here um, as, as best we can make do. Um, we like to begin all of our meetings with prayer, so um, we're just going to uh, just say a quick Hail Mary together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Um, I really appreciate, once again, everybody coming and, and being here. I'm going to go ahead and I have a little slideshow that I'm going to present. Um, I still am admitting people into our um, wonderful, wonderful meeting that we're having. So, I think the problem was that we were, um, we had a Google call or a Google Meet call. Um, we have somebody trying to join via Google Meet. No one is accepting your request. Um, let's see. The problem I had was when we, we did Google Meet at the same time as the Zoom, audio was getting choppy. So, I think. If I can try to get you um, in via Google Meet, I will. But otherwise, we're going to stick out here. Um, let's see here. I'm not muted. I don't think I'm muted. All right. There's a few more people I'm admitting. Okay. Begin doing a screen share. Um, does everybody see the presentation? Google slide person on their screen. Give me a thumbs up if you see a Google slide presentation or a thumbs down if you do not. I think you're sharing your screen. Thumbs way down, okay. All right, let's try this again. Okay, I'm gonna talk you through it. Um, as we begin going through this presentation, uh, let's see here. I do want to try to get this slideshow shared with you. Guys, I'm sorry, I lost the video too for a second. Um, Okay, here we go. All right, so I should have uh, a PowerPoint on the screen now, are we good? Yes, all right, wonderful. Um, thank you, I'm kind of restarting this entire meeting again. Um, I apologize for all the technical difficulties. Zoom is not my native language. But I'm, I'm excited to be spending the time with you guys tonight, and I hope by the end of the night we can answer all of your questions about cum laude. What I would like to do is keep um, sending questions to me. I want you to send questions to me via chat. Uh, you can send them in direct messages to me. Um, and uh, I wrote that they'll be related to our presenters and asked at the end of the session, Mr. Bloomer is going to try to join us. He is in President's Council meeting right now. Um, so I am, I'm kind of filling in for him, but uh, I should be able to help you with any questions you have about the cum laude program. All right. So our first question, what is the cum laude program? What is it all about? 
The KMC Glaud program is an honors program that extends for the entire length of a student's tenure at Cape and Mount Carmel. It culminates in a designation on the student's high school diploma that the cum laude, I'm sorry, that the student completed the cum laude program, thus evidencing that the student managed the most rigorous course load offer at KSC. Um, I put on here a sample of different cum laude curriculums, what they look like. This is found on the CAPEN website. It is also in the program of studies. Um, so it's, it's available in quite a few different places. I know that you're not gonna be able to read that, that tiny writing. I have it right here and we're gonna blow it up a little bit. Whoops, and look at it a little bit closer. Maybe if my computer quits acting a little silly here. Um, okay. So there's a few different options with cum laude. Um, as the last slide said, the cum laude program consists of the most rigorous classes that Capen has to offer. Um, it's got four years of honors English, four year requirement of an honors math, four years of an honors science, three and a half years of honors social studies, and four years, I'm sorry, three years of the same world language. So uh, a typical student, every student at Cape and Mount Carmel has to have 28 credits to graduate. Many of those credits are, are going to be um, your honors classes. You will still have some room to get electives, to get art classes and things like that, but the bulk of your child's time at Cape End is gonna be spent with these challenging academic classes. There is some choice built in. Um, one of the questions we often get when looking at different classes in the cum laude program is, will my child still be able to do the St. Gianna program if, if they're interested? Um, and the answer to that is yes. Will my child be able to do, to do theater or sports? The answer is yes as well. Um, but it does take a little bit of balance. A couple of things to point out here um, is that there are a lot of opportunities for college credit for students who um, are in the cum laude program. With science especially, science and math, there's lots of different choices um, of college credits, their junior and senior year. Um, honors anatomy, physiology, honors chemistry, honors physics, AP biology are all different junior year choices. Many of those choices can be done senior year um, it's not uncommon for cum laude students to double up on science classes their junior and senior year. You sometimes might have heard about that. With math, the core curriculum examples we've given here list AP Calculus 1 and AP Calculus 1 or 2 as the senior classes. It's also important to note that Capen also teaches college algebra and statistics. So um, both of those classes are, are very well accepted for the cum laude credits senior year. Um, so there, there's um, no concern about that if your child does not want to do calculus, there's college algebra and statistics. So, um, all right, let's talk about how we kind of came to this night. To gain entrance into the KMC cum laude program, once recommendations have been made, your student will enroll in honors classes in all core subject areas, math, English, social studies, science, and world language. This is done, this will be done on March 3rd. That is when our enrollment date occurs. Um, in order to stay in the cum laude program, the student needs to maintain A's and B's. During the first semester of the freshman year, we have what's referred to as a probationary period. So uh, that's, that's our students' chance at making it into the program. Students who are in all honors their first semester and then um, are accepted into the cum laude program by having all A's and B's. We'll have a special induction mass. Um, we'll have a special induction mass in January. And at that January mass, they'll be officially named as part of the cum laude program. Throughout their career at Capen, only one C can be allowed for continuation in the cum laude program. A second C or any grade lower than a C at any time in a subject will remove a student from cum laude.
let's talk about the benefits of the cum laude program. There is opportunity to enroll in and earn college credit in the areas of English, math, science, social studies, and world language um, through concurrent credit enrollment and or AP testing during junior and senior year with potential of up to 30 credits. Uh, that's pretty typical for our seniors in the cum laude program to have that many credits. Um, so counselors will work with students to maximize college credits if that's something that you're interested in. Another benefit of the cum laude program is the chance, let's see here, pardon me. Oh, another benefit of the, of the cum laude program is that the chance of acceptance into a selective college increases. So recent cum laude students have been accepted to Stanford, Columbia, Purdue, Notre Dame, Vanderbilt, Drake, Marquette, and, and many others as well. One of the benefits you know, that I see as most prevalent um, is that students are surrounded in these honors classes by the most driven of their peers. There's an old saying that uh, you, know, you, you run faster if you're running with faster people. So that thought can also be applied to our uh, students in, the, in these honors classes. Um, our students are surrounded by their peers who take their education very seriously, who want to learn, who have that love of learning so um, it, it makes for a very different learning environment than in a typical classroom. Other benefits, the KMC valedictorian and salutatorian, salutatorian are always cum laude students. And they are always cum laude students because they're enrolled in honors classes, which carry a higher GPA point credit. Um, there are also recognition masses and receptions. We wanna keep encouraging our cum laude students throughout the year, um, throughout every year, to celebrate their success and commend them for their hard work. Another little footnote here is that the average ACT composite score of cum laude students in 2020 was 31.9. So very good score for our cum laude class. No one is guaranteed any scholarship funds by enrolling in the cum laude program. Many college scholarships, however, but not all of them, are based on GPAs and college entrance test scores. So students that are in the cum laude program will have the opportunity to earn a higher GPA by taking honors and AP classes, which may also affect a higher ACT or SAT score. So that's uh, just a fancy way of saying that we really think our cum laude students are gonna be better prepared for scholarship competitions um, they're going to have the GPA that colleges desire and the colleges will award their scholarships to. Community involvement, athletics, and work ethic are often coupled in scholarship decisions. So we do try to find ways for our cum laude students to also um, be involved with other groups. Many of our cum laude students find themselves inducted into National Honor Society. Um, and, and as I said, we do try to make sure that students can be involved in athletics um, other school involvements, things like that, so that they are, are well-rounded and have more to focus on than um, just academics. All right, at this time, I would like to turn this over to uh, Joe Bajoy. Um, Joe is a senior who is in our program. And so, Joe, are you there? You can- Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So Joe, we're turning it over to you. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience in the cum laude program? Yeah, so um, cum laude has been pretty good, not just like for the academics, but I think it's pretty good for building uh, a community of students. Like you're gonna have most of the same people in a lot of your classes just because you're gonna be taking um, the honors classes. So there's like, there's less honors classes than there are like regular classes. So you're gonna have the opportunity to um, be in the same classes with all, a lot of these people, especially once you move on to higher grades. Um, Cause right now, like I'm in four or five classes with the same people because we're taking, you know, the highest level of classes. So, you know, it, it's pretty good. It's challenging, but I think it helps you manage your time pretty well. Um, so Joe, you talked a little bit about the relationships that you made with some of the other cum laude students. 
Um, what are your plans for next year? Do you mind sharing those with everyone? Uh, yeah, I so I'm most likely going to KU and um, I want to major in some sort of engineering, probably electrical. And, um, you know, I got accepted into their honors college. Excellent. Yep. Um, so you're looking at engineering. Um, mm -hmm. what, what are some of the um, experiences you've had or, or, or what kind of led you to engineering through the cum laude program? Um, well, I've always been pretty interested in math and kind of like science, but I wasn't sure what type of science I really liked. But Capen offers chem, physics, biology, and uh, they, I'm like right now, I know they offer AP bio, AP chem, and AP physics. So uh, I took honors physics last year and I took calc one last year. I'm taking calc two this year. And I've, I've been enjoying those classes. Um, I'm in AP physics this year and I, I've been enjoying those classes. And I think it really helps out to take these college classes in high school just um, to get a feel for it before going to college. So um, you can get better prepared for college classes and what learning in college is going to be like. What was the hardest thing about um, being a cum laude student for you? Um, I think the hardest thing is the time management, honestly. Um, you know, <laughs> the, the funny thing is that you usually get the most homework in English class, not even uh, like a math or science class. It's always going to be English. And Managing your time well is really important because I I really I tend to procrastinate honestly and um, it it does not it's not good it's not good for you and you I think you need to be able to manage your time well. Sure. So um, I know that you're involved in some extracurriculars, Joe. What all have you had time to do? Even though you've you've learned to manage your time, well, yeah. I'll put it that well, way. Well, so. yeah. Uh, so I, I've done scholars bowl. I'm in NHS. I'm co-president of NHS. Um, I did tennis. Um, I actually started a tutoring club at Cape Inn where we have kids go to All Saints every week and um, tutor. Um, you know, I'm, I'm usually, I try to stay involved in school and uh, it's been fine. It's, it's good to make time for extracurriculars because it helps you get involved with the community and the school in general. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Joe, I might ask you to stay on a little bit in case yeah, sure. you have some questions from parents. Um, they can, they can uh, send some, some questions through chat for you as well. Yeah. Um, so that's just a really generic overview of, of the cum laude program. Um, what the student doing is they're, they're signing up for honors classes in all potential subjects throughout their time at Cape Inn. Um, it does require a lot of effort on the student's part. It does require a great deal of uh, self-advocacy when talking to teachers. Um, but I think the most reoccurring comment I hear about a cum laude student is, is time management, um, making sure that you work into a, a good steady pace um, and that you're able to, to keep up with all those different um, subjects, all those different pieces of homework. Um, as far as the benefits go, we spoke a little bit about um, the distinction that cum laude brings. It's, um, it's really a chance, you know, high school is about making students fall in love with learning. Uh, it's not just about getting from the beginning to the end, uh, but it's also about making sure students love to learn and that they want to continue learning as, as they go forward. Um, with cum laude, I think, your child will get to explore a little bit more than the typical student will. Um, so I think now would be a good time too for some questions and I'm starting to get some, some questions filtered in on chat. So I'm gonna bring that out. So uh, my first question from Mrs. Polk, can you please explain how the GPA works, especially in relation to what colleges see on transcripts? And can they still do AP or college credit without being in the program? Gonna answer your second question first, and that is yes, students that are not in the cum laude program can still take AP tests, they can still take college classes here at Capen without being in the program. That's totally fine. We have many students who are in college classes but not um, in the cum laude program. Um, 
sidebar, we also have a lot of students that take one or two honors classes. They just pick and choose what they want to do. They're not considered cum laude students um, because they're not in all honors, but they're, they're still challenging themselves um, in, in different areas. As far as how the GPA works, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, a normal class weight would be on the typical 4.0 scale system. You have a 4.0 for the A, 3.0 for the B, 2.0 for the C, and a 1.0 for the D. By being in an honors class, a student gets an extra half credit bump on their weighted GPA. So an A would be worth a 4.5, B would be worth 3.5, so on and so forth. If a student is in the AP class, and takes the AP test at the end of the year, they get an additional half point bump onto that GPA. So for example, a student who is in AP US history and takes the AP test at the end of the year and receives an A in the class would get a five point mark on his or her um, score for that class. So um, what does that matter to colleges? What does that matter right now? The weighted GPA is typically, well, first of all, uh, at Cape and Mount Carmel, the weighted GPA is used to position, is used to determine class position, um, class rank, that sort of thing. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the valedictorian and salutatorian always come out of the cum laude program. So that's why it's because they have the most weighted classes. So with colleges, colleges are typically going to award scholarships not based on the weighted gpa they're going to award it based on the unweighted gpa and so you might think well that's counterproductive you know why would i why wouldn't i just take easy classes and get a 4.0 um and and risk instead of risking a lower gpa in these challenging classes uh it, it kind of goes back to the fact that the people, the, the, and Joe, you can attest to this, the sort of people that are in these classes are people who are driven to succeed and who want to learn and are, who are there for the challenge. And so the benefit, it's not so much in, um, you know, getting that scholarship, it's, it's by becoming a lover of learning. Uh, Joe, would that sound okay? Does that sound? Yeah, I mean, that's right. It's, it's more than about the way to GP. It's more about like the experience that you get. Um, in being in Kumade. Thank you, Joe. Um, so hopefully that answers your question about that. Um, I will say too, the colleges that we've tended to work with, if you're concerned about what they might see on the transcript, the transcripts also show the courses that your student has selected. <clears throat> and so they'll be able to see all the different honors classes and you'll be able to put on a college application that you chose the most rigorous classes. Okay, next question. Does pathway selection determine whether you are on cum laude curriculum one versus two? <clears throat> That's a great question. Um, pathways in general and, and how they work with cum laude. Um, as far as pathways go, any pathway except for the St. Joseph, the worker pathway, which is our WSU Tech pathway, any pathway can complement the cum laude program meaning you can choose any of the pathways you want. You can do the art pathway, the teaching pathway, the, the St. Gianna pathway, and still match up with cum laude. The differences listed for the, the one and two track, really the only difference is what math you're ending up with. Um, in the cum laude track two, you're ending up with AP Calc two. In the cum laude track one, you're ending up with AP Calc one or college algebra or statistics. Really, your choice of math um, is going to depend on your possible major or your possible career choices. Um, as I've worked with students, what, uh, what we found is that uh, a student who's interested in engineering or a science, um, a scientific career, they're the ones who are going to need the physics and the AP Calc 1 and the AP Calc 2. Um, other students that are looking at law or education, things like that, they would benefit more by taking college algebra and statistics. So really, <clears throat> the cum laude track can, can foster uh, um, a good product in, in either one of those roles and any of those pathways. Um, by the time your child gets to be a senior, we are really going to start looking at future careers and their dreams and their hopes and what they want to do and try to help them match up with the science and math that supports that. 
hopefully that helps. Okay, next question. What percentage of students are in the program? We have um, about oh, 875 students or so at Cape and right now. And we have, uh, so every year we, we matriculate, um, every year that, that students go on to the next grade, we end up losing a few. Um, so some students just uh, for whatever reason don't continue on in the program. But uh, it's just sort of, um, I would say at the, at the freshman year, we tend to have about 150 to 175. By sophomore year, that number is down to about 125. <coughs> By senior year, we're looking at about 35 to 45 people. <coughs> One second, I'm going to get a quick drink. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, how often does a student in the cum laude program receive a full ride scholarship? Um, well, a full ride, not often. Um, full rides are extremely challenging to get. I will say that um, a lot of our students will find themselves getting lots of different scholarships <coughs> or being invited to scholarship competitions. Um, we had, uh, and WSU has the Distinguished Scholarship Invitational where they have maybe five to 600 students invited from across the state and they compete over a two-month process um, for a full ride scholarship and one of our cum laude students made it to runner-up so he was almost there but um, <coughs> in order to get those major scholarships we would work with students and we try to provide them avenues and applications and things like that um, being in the cum laude program does not necessarily guarantee you a scholarship Scholarships are a tricky business. Um, full rides are rare. That doesn't mean that they're impossible to get. Um, a lot of students will end up with multiple scholarships and then they just have to decide which one works best for them. Joe, can I put you on the spot one more time? What kind of scholarships uh, were you offered? Yeah, so at KU I was offered uh, in-state plus uh, the high, like the Chancellor Scholarship, which is the highest you can get based on merit. And then I was given, so that's $5,000 a year. And then I was given 4000 more from the School of Engineering. So that gave me 9000 a year. And I, I forgot how much that um, makes, like my tuition per year, but it significantly lowers the cost. Definitely. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Were there other scholarships you were offered at other schools? Um. Yeah, like uh, I applied to SMU and they give me, I think, like the second highest tier. Um, it's, I, and the tier right under the full ride. But what I will say about a full ride is that um, it's going to be like cum laude, graduating with all A's. That's probably going to be a baseline. You're going to need a lot of extracurriculars and a lot of accomplishments because full ride is a lot of money depending on where you want to go. So, yeah. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Um, so yeah, that's a really a great way of saying it, that, that cum laude is a baseline, but it does take more. Um, it does take a lot of uh, extracurricular involvement and, and some other applications and legwork on the students' parts. Um, the merit scholarship that Joe was talking about, um, our students are going to, that, that's uh, a merit scholarship is based on a high GPA and um, my ACT score. So typically our students do just fine with the Met scholarships. But beyond that, then um, we work with you. Okay, on average, how many of homework, how many hours of homework per night? Joe, you're the expert. Um, again, it depends on what classes you're taking, but it's not gonna be crazy. It's gonna be a couple hours at, at most every night. Um, I will, I will say that you should expect the most homework from English. Like even when you're taking um, like Calc 1 or 2, the amount of homework is going to be, it's not going to be that like a crazy amount. But um, when you end up taking those classes, you're going to need to study a lot though. Uh, that's going to take up a lot of time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. From what I understand, uh, Joe, you can correct me if I'm wrong about the English program, is that you have a lot of books to read. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a lot of 
reading, and then it's a lot of also of memorization of different lines and stanzas and things. Yeah, like that. yeah, like this year, I mean, we're reading books pretty quickly, and uh, like right now, <laughs> we're alternating between writing papers, like doing lines of memorization. It's it's a lot of work, but it's not really like difficult. It's just a lot of work. Yeah. And, you know, that being English 4, technically it is a college class, too. So yeah. It's mm -hmm. um, I, it's, it's not uncommon, though, what you just said. I've heard a lot of juniors even say that English is the most, the most time consuming. Not yeah. that necessarily mm -hmm. the most challenging, but that it does eat up most of the time. Um, some of the other AP and concurrent level courses, you're not going to have much of a written homework load, per se. Um, some of, some of uh, those classes being college level classes are going to be a lot more test heavy uh, for grades. Right. Yeah, like for um, Calc, I, I, I'll say maybe get half an hour, 45 minutes of homework per, per class, but um, I you really have to study because the tests are 80% of your grade mm -hmm. in that class. So. Very good. Thank you. So the mm -hmm. next question was, how, how does that homework average compare to students not in the program? Um, it Well, cum laude is going to have more homework. Uh, I don't think there's any way around that. Um, the amount of homework, is, um, I, I think, again, the fact that you're when you're a junior and senior, you're going to be enrolling in, in college level classes means that you're going to have a little bit more time that you need to put into studying. Um, with English, it's a lot more of the reading and writing and, and things to that nature. Um, all of our courses at Cape are college prep. So you're not going to have a class in the core subjects with no homework, but you are definitely going to be expected to do more in the in the cum laude program. Definitively, hours per night. I, I just I don't know. I don't feel totally comfortable giving that, but <clears throat> I would I would I would just say you're you're going to have more. So um, our non honors programs are still reading books. They're still going to be uh, writing essays, taking tests, all of that. So. Okay, waiting for any other questions. I don't think I did that good of a job speaking, so <laughs> hopefully there are some questions out there. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, here we go. Are there limits on where the college credits transfer to? Oh, that's a great question. So the college credits that we, uh, well, the college credits that the students get um, are typically received through Newman University. So Newman is accredited within the state of Kansas. And so every college in Kansas, K-State, KU, WSU, Pitt State, Emporia State, Fort Hayes State, um, they will all accept Newman credits. If you start looking at out-of-state colleges, and this is something you'll do junior and senior year, counselors will work with you to see where those colleges transfer to um, and what they transfer as. Um, some of the Ivy League colleges, for example, will not want to take any, any other college's credits. They'll want you to take math classes there, for example. So that's just something we would work with you on. How is it handled if a student wants to take a foreign language they haven't previously studied? Can they still join the honors class? Absolutely, yes, 100%. If you have never taken French or Spanish or Latin, um, we would still invite you to take the honors version of whatever language it is you choose. I, I really think um, just by virtue, a, a good way for you to decide whether or not you're ready for this honors level language class is how well you are doing in English or world history at your current school. Are you able to understand new vocabulary? Are you able to um, conjugate your English pretty well? Um, those types of skills are what you're gonna need to be successful in an honors world language program. Um, I think only half of our diocesan schools are teaching world language in the eighth grade. So it is not uncommon for students to be in an honors level one world language class and have never taken language in their life. Um, it's just a matter of, of them um, putting in the work, putting in study habits, and, and then they'll be successful um, at that level. So uh, I would definitely say don't try to skip ahead in those world language classes. 
Um, this, if you've never taken a world language class before, there is a chance to test out of it. But um, if, if you're not prepared for those later world language classes, they can be a real challenge. Yeah, I just want to, I just want to um, add on to that. The people that are, so in Spanish, a lot of people move, uh, started honor Spanish students instead of honor Spanish one. But um, if you're going to do that, then you might end up at AP Spanish 5 which is a is a really really difficult course from what i'm hearing um so i would i would just take it slowly even even if you think that you can um even if you think you can take honor spanish too it's just good to get your base really strong jumping ahead um in any class math science uh world language if you can do it great but it's one of those things where if if you have gaps in your knowledge they are going to be exposed later on down the road. So um, just something uh, to think about as you're looking at these testing out things. Um, my new question, for the people who are taking honors freshman algebra right now, um, there's a couple of schools that are, that are doing that. If they test into the sophomore geometry, would they still be in the cum laude program? And yes, you would. You would be placed into the honors geometry as a sophomore. So um, let's talk about that, that test out process just a little bit for later on this, this spring. Um, um, on a Saturday, we have a, a test out day for students who are going to try to test out of the freshman science classes and who are gonna try to test out of Honors Algebra One. Um, you will take the test here at Capen. Uh, I don't have the, the date in front of me, but it should be on that timeline that you were given a couple weeks ago. Um, on that day, you'll take the test. The tests, I think, just take about an hour long. Um, and then the teacher, the, the head of the Department of Math or Science or Foreign Language is the one who's administering that test. They will follow up with you on what your placement should be. Um, when we get together to enroll for classes on March 3rd, the highest we'll be able to place that night is Honors Algebra 1. So um, if you're taking Honors Algebra 1, please be patient with us. We just need to wait and get the grades back from your teacher. Um, if you're looking to take that placement test, um, then that's fine. But on the night of an enrollment on the 3rd, we'll be putting you in Honors Algebra 1. Once we get your test back from the teacher, um, from that placement test, then we'll put you at the appropriate level of class. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, well, it is nearly o'clock. Um, I still, I will stay on with people as long as you have questions. Um, if I, I want to, to let you know too, I have one question that just popped up and I'll get to you. Um, I wanna let you know, um, I just came from a previous meeting with some parents that are, are of incoming freshmen. The counseling staff is working for you right now. So if you have questions on enrollment or the appropriate placement um, for your child next year, please reach out to a counselor at CAPEN. Um, we are here to help you and you can call us in the morning. Um, you can give us an email anytime. You can schedule appointments to come in. We would love to work with you one-on-one -on -one and um, just follow up with you uh, and answer any questions that you personally have. We are here for you. We are working for you. Is there a date yet for testing out of Spanish uh, is a question that just popped up. There is not as of yet. Um, there, it was going to be put on the same day as the math and science tests. And uh, that was just way too much. That was way too much testing. So um, they're going to move that to either the weekend before or the weekend after. And I think right now we're just looking to see what, um, what oh, was, uh, sorry, to see what conflicts we have. Um, have the sign up genius invites been sent for March 3rd yet? No, we were actually waiting until tonight's meetings get done to see if there was any questions we could answer. Um, that way, um, you could know whether or not you wanted to sign up at a specific time, if you want your child there, that sort of thing. Where can we rewatch this meeting? It's been recorded, so um, we're gonna upload it tonight. Um, hopefully, I can have somebody clean out all my stuttering and things like that but we're gonna get it uploaded and then it's the link to watch this video again is gonna be sent to you via email directly. 
So everyone will have the email to watch this, this meeting again tomorrow. All right, guys, I just wanna say thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna stay on until everybody has left. Um, Joe, thank you very much for being here. Uh, so we will see, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, everyone else, I'll probably see you in a month or so or in a few weeks, it's not that long. So um, feel free to sign out whenever you're ready. And like I said, I will stay on and just continue to answer any questions. And feel free to unmute yourself if you would like to just be vocal. So, yeah. Thanks, Joe. We'll see you later. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Ooh, okay, now we're getting some questions. Is there a limit on the number of students that can enroll in a specific honors class? Oh, and you're welcome, Mrs. Chair. Uh, if you get a late time for enrollment, do you risk classes being full? That's a good question. Um, we try to cap all of our classes at 25. <clears throat> so um, I would say there's not really, we're not, what we want to do is try to make this equal opportunity for everybody. And we will have students that make changes to their schedule right up until the first week of school. Um, so if you are concerned that this may or may not be the right move for you, um, I think go ahead, you know, err on whatever side of caution you prefer, but just know that we can be flexible with you and move your choice if need be. Um, if, uh, you know, um, you decide that this is not for you and you want to move over the summer, we can change that, you know, for, for whichever direction you choose. I hope that makes sense. Basically, just know we'll be flexible with you and we'll help you um, into the class. And there's no need to worry about a class being too full. We have plenty of sections of each class. Um, thank you very much. And I'll make sure to pass that along to Joe. Um, do we need to know all of our class selections in advance of March 3rd, or will that help guide you at enrollment? As long as you have a general idea of what you want to do, that's fine. You will have an individual staff member there to help you and walk you through. Um, if you have questions on electives, things like that, just, just let, let somebody know between now and then. Um, I think typically for all freshmen, um, the electives are always PE, definitely get PE done and out of the way. Um, and then either computer applications and, and communications or an art class. So yeah, something like that. But as far as the honors versus standard classes, yeah, it's good to have that discussion before coming. You are welcome. Thank you. Glad you're here. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great evening.